Hello, today's Bible study comes from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 7, and the verses are 8 through 12, and it reads as follows. Even if I caused you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while, yet now I am happy. Not because you were made happy, but because your sorrow led me led you to repentance. For you became sorrowful as God intended, and so were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you. What earnestness, what eagerness to be to clear yourselves. What indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done. At every point you have proved yourselves to be innocent in this matter. So even though I wrote to you, I was neither on account of the one who did the wrong nor on account of the injured party, but rather that before God you could see for yourselves how devoted to us you are. Ooh, some fruit being produced. So Paul starts off writing for, even if I made you sorry for my letter. And the letter that he wrote um, was a letter that he had put together between 1st and 2nd Corinthians. It wasn't 1st Corinthians. It didn't seem like it would be. But um, it could have been 2nd Corinthians. And it, it doesn't say, but Paul had wrote a letter to him. And he says, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. And it was a it was a letter filled with sorrow. And remember, Titus carried it, but um, it was very confrontational. And being as confrontational as it was, and yes, they did deserve it. The Corinthians deserved this letter. Um, that's why he wrote it. And he says, though I did regret it, at the same time, um, Paul was happy by the fruit that was produced from the letter. And and that's why he wrote, I do not regret it. Because just like when we have perseverance, perseverance builds fruit from it. And this letter had fruit from it. Um, and he tells them, the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while. See, Paul was saying some things about how they were going through the sin. The pleasure part of it goes away. The sorrow may stay. But then he says, in true repentance, the sorrow passeth, the pleasure abideth forever. Get rid of it. And as you notice, Paul speaks to him and with this, he's he's looking for fruit from this. What's going to grow from these from this letter? And as he speaks, he says, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow, look at this, sorrow had a fruit for them, and it led them to repentance. And Paul is saying this sorrow and repentance there was a separation between them and they are not even close to being the same thing. And Paul is concerned. If you have sorrow, you're just sorry, but this repentance from this sorrow is really the repentance from their sin. And the, the sorrow was just an emotion, you know, those things that we have, but the repentance was a change in, mind. You know, when we repent, we say our mind is changed, but it's also supposed to affect our life. So it's also supposed to be a change in our life. And Paul is, is acknowledging this. He says, the separation there is between sorrow and repentance. Sorrow is just an emotion. See, but if the sorrow leads to the fruit of repentance, that's when this sorrow really works. And then he tells them, hey, it is not, repentance is just not being sorry. 
okay? It is more than that. It is a change in mind and hopefully leading to a change in your life. And, and Paul was bringing this to their attention. You were made sorry in a godly manner. And, and Paul is just making them feel bad. <laughs> and he, he's making them feel bad for sinning. But he was doing it in the way of love, in a godly way. And see, the the problem here is Paul was using the truth. Um, he wasn't over exaggerating. He wasn't making no fabrication up. He was just brutally honest. And he had, excuse me, Paul had no hidden plans for himself. And this wasn't him trying to get over on them. He just told them the truth and love, and it was hurting them. It's a hard pill to swallow. And Paul Paul was just bringing this to their attention. And he said, you know, hey, I got to get you to understand this. And as he was being brutally honest, Paul is telling them, Hey, this is what's going on. And that that sorrow, if it's just an emotion, it ain't it ain't there. But when it leads to repentance, when godly sorrow, it has to be godly sorrow, it will lead to repentance, which is the fruit of godly sorrow. Repenting is a fruit in this situation. It is a benefit, it is a gain, it is an increase to what you weren't doing because you feel it that deeply, okay? And Paul is telling them this, and this it's a hard, it's a hard lesson for him. And he says, Godly sorrow produces repentance unto salvation. And, and he's not saying that you are saved by your repentance. He's not saying that. But it is part of it. It is part of it. You know, we are told, believe, repent, confess, all those things. It's part of it. And repentance. It doesn't describe how we get back to God. Repentance means a change of mind, but it really means we're coming to God. We're repenting to the Lord. And we can't go to God without it. Our ways are not God's ways. We have to repent from our ways. And this sorrow that they had, that some of them had, it didn't produce anything except that emotional bad feeling. But this godly sorrow, as he said, the godly sorrow produces repentance. Not just sorrow, but godly sorrow produces repentance. And if you see that it produces repentance, it should be godly sorrow because there was a fruit from it. So godly sorrow is measured by what it produces, and what it produces is repentance. And then he says, not to be regretted. Godly sorrow does what it's supposed to do. And it ain't going to make you feel good. But does it do good work? When you get fruit from something, it builds you, it increases you, it helps you gain. And Paul is definitely acknowledging this. It produces, okay, it produces and not to be regretted. It doesn't feel good. It does a good work. Now, the sorrow of the world, that's totally different. Because, as he said, it produces death. And that 
that sorrow produces death, just plain and simple. What diligence it produced in you. Look at this now. It's talking about some fruits. What diligence it produced in you. What clearing of yourselves. What indignation. What fear. What vehement desire. What zeal and what vindication. All of this was from that godly sorrow. And it went towards working real with repentance for these Corinthians. And godly sorrow lets you have diligence. And this diligence is going to keep them turned around towards God. And then the clearing of themselves. And that's just saying all my shame, all my sin, all my guilt. I brought to God, and now I'm doing what he told me to do. What indignation? It's just us being indignant at ourselves. We were the foolish ones. We did the foolishness and sin. And this is what really makes repentance happen and last. Okay, what fear? Man, I can't even go into how much fear you should have. This godly sorrow is going to produce it. And the fear that is producing that we should fall back into that sin again. We shouldn't fall back into it. And he's he's not saying fear God or anything like that. But as fear of sin. He's saying you don't have a weakness towards your sin. What vehement desire. And he's just saying your heart is changing. Your heart's changed. It really wants godliness. It wants to be pure. It wants to be good. And this is through strong prayer. And then, as usual, total dependence on the Lord as we all should have. What zeal. Oh, man, what zeal. Don't be slacking. We we are working in short. We have zeal. Remember, Paul was overzealous himself. What vindication? We are vindicated as, as a follower of Christ. Even though we have sinned, we are vindicated. And you can tell that because the measure of a Christian goes towards whether or not they repent. Will you repent? Will you call on God? Will you ask for help? Will you change? And then he says, prove yourself to be clear. In short, we are clear of our sin. In all things you prove yourselves to be clear. Paul just says in all those things you prove, your repentance proved you to be clear. Had nothing to do with your feelings. It was your actions. And then he says in this matter, and Paul is just saying who had done wrong, who had suffered wrong, but he said, I did not do it for the sake. And Paul's purpose for writing this letter, and it was a sorrowful letter, was not to say this is who I'm going with or this is who I'm not going with among these Corinthians. Because they were having the, the altercations, if you want to call it that. He was saying that they cared for them. Okay? In the sight of God. And that they should see it. That it might appear to them. And Paul had a concern and a love for the Corinthian Christians. And, hey, Paul bent over backwards for them. And 
they really had some ways about them. They remember they were with the worshiping the gods and goddesses, and they had mixed in paganistic ways in their traits. They were accepting of some of the sins that they would see and say this one isn't as bad as that one. But Paul loved them, and he's talking to them. Amen.